Whether active, dead, gone, whatever, don't be on that graph. Now, I'll tell you something else, huh? I'm one of those who is so, 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 so incensed. Yeah, call me civil society or whatever. Whatever is going on with this Sputnik and all that, I heard it on news file. We better do something about it. I always want the best for Ghana, so I'll take this from Ifia. And my panel is back to do justice to understanding COVID testing. Because last week we were off uh, radio, so many of you didn't get to interact and benefit. Take this from Ifia, we'll be back. Right, this is Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM. We try to bring out the best in you. We know the best is right here on 99.7 FM. Live on FB, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, Joy 99.7 FM. We are back online, on air, everywhere, on your, ha- on your behalf. So last week, we got into the business of uh, understanding COVID-19 testing with my guests. All fellows of the West Africa College of um, Medical Sciences, Dr. Lord Basing is here, Seth Ajiman is here, and Dr. Dennis Edu Jesse is online, and they are revved up. Because we were not uh, on uh, radio last week, many of you didn't get to uh, interact with us, we'll go over some of the issues. We've learned a few things. We know what a false negative is, what a false positive is. You should know what a PCR test is and what an antigen test is and what the differences are and, of course, what the, uh, the scientific standards and measurements are. If you do not, you're welcome to ask the questions. WhatsApp is 055 11 11 997. But today also, I'm quite concerned that we look at the protocols for the reporting and recording of the outcomes of these tests. Uh, what I've just read out to you, and I'll go over them again, are the figures for Ghana as at the 10th of August. Today is the 15th. Now you can see we have 6,417 cases, 913 deaths, sadly, 60 persons in Ghana are in critical condition, and 114 persons are in severe condition. Now, I will. Of course, uh, it's understandable that critical is more uh, serious than severe. But these are serious numbers because they could tip our numbers when it comes to deaths or casualties or fatalities. Uh, We still have 102,976 that have recovered. And um, our total number of cases is 110,306 or 396 since the 12th of March 2020 okay our positivity rate when we add everything from the airports and other uh, forms of surveillance routine surveillance and enhanced contact tracing is about 7.3 so gentlemen you're welcome in the studio and on zoom thank you very much 
much. Right, and we're back today because we are online, and last week uh, our testing uh, was off radio, so many people didn't get to uh, interact with us. So uh, welcome, Dr. Edu Jesse, who is the PRO for the Ghana Association of Medical Lab Scientists. Let me start with you on, on Zoom. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Right. And regards to my colleagues in the studio. Right. Lord and Seth. Right. Okay. So, folks, if you just joined us, I have in, uh, I'm in the company of uh, biomedical scientists, uh, men of high repute, and they are the right people to talk about testing and what it is and what it isn't. There's been a lot of back and forth about testing, and last week we went into detail. Right. But let me start with you, Dr. Edu JC. Let's just recap. So essentially, when we are testing, um, we're testing for the presence of the, the virus that causes the COVID-19. Right. And uh, that virus is the SARS-CoV-2. So all the tests we talk about, be they PCR or antigen tests or antibody tests, are looking for the presence or to establish the presence of this virus. Am I right? Yeah. So me... Thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon to your cherished listeners. So, basically, as you've said, uh, if somebody is said to have COVID, that is a coronavirus disease, 2019, which is caused by the virus SARS-CoV-2. Uh, the presence of this particular virus is what establishes a disease, okay. together with the signs and symptoms that a person may have. So, as you said, if you want to establish the presence, uh, definitely by the gold standard accepted now, you have to do the PCR, which is a polymerase chain reaction. The polymerase chain reaction is identifying the test unit of the nucleic acid material, and then through certain conditions and operations and methods, you will multiply it if it's present. And once it's present, you bring it to the level that it can now be detected okay. by the various methods that are available. So if it's there, then one can say you are positive to the SARS-CoV-2. And together with the size and symptoms or whatever made the suspicion, we can establish that you have COVID. Okay. The now other side of it, if I could quickly add, is, you know, the virus itself will have to produce certain proteins. What enables it to be able to infect people? Okay. What enables it to exhibit all the things that we experience with it when they come into contact with the body? So those proteins, if you identify them, then largely you are going to use the antigen test processes. So you have to target specific proteins of the virus. What if you identify, you can't say it's for any other virus, being it Ebola, Marburg, and all the others that we are recently even talking about. But these ones, they are specific proteins. Once you find them, then you can only attribute it to the presence of the SARS-CoV-2. Okay. That is the antigen testing. Right. When the virus comes into the body, the body definitely will try to fight producing antibodies, which are the soldiers that naturally we use to fight conditions. So in that case, if you identify antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2, then here we may be able to say whether you once upon a time had the virus in the body or you are currently having it. So it talks about exposure and probably a previous infection. So depending on what you seek to do, then you may go in for a PCR, an antigen test, or the antibody test. So okay. that is how you determine the kind of test one has to do to establish the presence or absence of the virus. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Edu JC. He's the PRO of the Ghana Association of uh, Medical Lab Scientists. Uh, with me, I have two other members of the association and fellows of the West African uh, College, uh, Seth Ajiman and um, uh, Dr. Lord uh, Basing as well. Let me come into the studio and ask, you know, so we know the PCR and he establishes that as the gold standard, all right, that if you really want to be conclusive, uh, the PCR will give you the most conclusive uh, determination. But we also have uh, mentioned last week, and I've done some reading as well, which suggests that if you are talking about the person being currently infected or a current uh, infection, then you are talking about using a PCR, right? If you use the antigen, uh, it is not a measure or is not considered a measure of current uh, 
uh, infection. Can we clarify that? Is it that one is lower than the other and one should be used to confirm the other? Okay, I think I'll, I'll go for it. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Naughty by Nature. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that, that is my antigen test. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the PCR is said to be the gold standard because then it looks for the genetic information about the, the virus. Okay. So what you do is that you multiply this uh, RNA several times. So you, you cause a reaction. You cause a reaction okay. that makes it to uh, multiply several times so that you are able to detect it. Okay. An antigen test is looking for a particular protein okay. to the to the to the virus. Okay. So an antigen test uh, uh, is basically not as sensitive okay. as a PCR test. Okay. But it, an antigen test is very 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 useful in in a lot of uh, situations. Okay. Now I think before I talk about sensitive and then maybe specific, I need to explain them just in a, okay. in a sentence or so. Right. When you say a test is sensitive. It means that if the test says that somebody uh, has a disease, then the person truly has that disease. Okay. So then oh, what you are yeah, trying to do is that uh, when it's sensitive, you, are, you do not have a lot of false negatives. It will not react to anything else other than that disease. disease. Right. Uh, basically, when you say it's sensitive, what it means is that the likelihood that somebody would, would test negative when the person is positive is very is very small. Okay. So then you say that it is it is highly sensitive. Okay. When you say it is highly specific, mm -hmm. what it means that uh, when the test says negative, mm -hmm. if somebody is uh, negative, the person is truly negative. Mm -hmm. So what then what that means is that it will not give you false positives. Okay. So it will not tell you that you are positive when in actual mm -hmm. fact you are negative. Okay. So this is very very important because then we use that to explain why uh, the utility of antigen test is important in some areas okay. and not in some areas. Antigen tests are specific, highly specific. Okay. What that means is that if you test about 100 people mm -hmm. for, for uh, using the antigen test and you compare that to the antibody test, the likelihood of people having false positives, mm -hmm. people who turn positive, when they are not actually positive, okay. are very, very, very... It's slim. very slim. Very, very slim. So essentially, if that test, antigen test, mm -hmm. right, yeah. declares you positive, there's a high likelihood that you are truly positive. Positive, yes. And there's a very small Chance. margin of error yes. or error variance. Exactly. Okay. There's a small error that you were actually negative when, the, when okay. the antigen test said you were positive. Okay. So that is very, very, very important. And that is why antigen tests are often used as screening tests. To screen. To screen. Okay. To make sure that people that are, let's say, passing through airports, uh, uh, there, there's a, a school in okay. an area that are highly at risk. So you want to go and screen them and make sure that everybody is okay. okay. That's why antigen tests are often used they because of the fact that they are highly specific. Okay. Uh, the issue with antigen oh, tests, uh, again, even with this uh, high specificity, is mm -hmm. the fact that sometimes when the prevalence is low, when the actual numbers of COVID is low, you tend to have high uh, false positive rates. Okay. Because then you are screening about 5,000 people who do not have the, the infection. Okay. And uh, even, even if it's 99% uh, specific, right. you're going to have 1% that will give you false positives. Okay. When you multiply the 1% by the number of people you are screening, right. you are likely to have a, a, a quite a number of false okay. positives. That is an acceptable risk when okay. it comes to antigen testing okay when you get to the sensitivity can i can i just come in for the yes. benefit of my listeners uh, if you've just joined us we're talking about covid19 testing again right we want to get our tests right okay. so what you've just said right in a population where uh, the prevalence is low yes right yes. you're saying that it has the effect of uh, should i say increasing the chances of you getting a false positive positive yes. okay but the strength and the validity of the test itself has not changed. Yes. Or? No, it hasn't. Okay. It hasn't. Right. So in, in laboratory testing, mm -hmm. and I think that this is very important right. for all of us. Yeah. In laboratory testing, there's always an acceptable margin of error. Okay. Okay. No, even the PCR, which is the gold standard. It has a margin of error. It has a margin of right. error. So you can actually test for the PCR and it will tell you you are negative when you are actually positive. Or it will tell you you are positive when okay. you are actually negative. All right. That has been accepted globally okay. as normal okay the the antigen test is the same thing mm -hmm. there are margins of error okay and in situations where the prevalence is very very low okay okay you are screening thousands of people who 
naturally do not have. Okay. They're going to have a, a marginal increase All right. in the false positivity rate. That is also accepted globally that it's normal. And then and measures will be put in place, place to, to address this yes, probability. Uh, me measures are put in place to make sure that it, it does not. there's no undue burden on the patient who is being falsely... Okay. Uh, it, it's, acceptable, uh, it's accepted and right. everybody knows that this would happen. Okay. So that is one thing that we need to be okay. sure of. And it does not mean that the test is wrong okay. or the test is not good or something onto what has happened. Right. It is normally accepted in laboratory practice. Okay. Great. If you just joined us, we're talking about uh, the science behind the numbers. We see the figures. We read them out. We need to understand what these figures are, how they are generated, and what they should guide. They obviously are guiding clinical response, uh, national response, behavioral strategies, and all that. So that's why we are... Uh, putting in the effort to make sure that we all break it down and understand it. If you have any questions, concerns, uh, what's up is 055-11-11-997. And uh, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you heard speaking Dr. Lord uh, Basing. He is a lecturer at the Department of Medical Diagnostics of the KNUST and the CEO of Incas Diagnostics. Daniel Edujesi, who is on Zoom, is a fellow of the West African uh, Postgraduate College of Medical Laboratory Sciences and an immunologist and the PRO of the Ghana Association of Medical Lab Scientists and Seth Ajiman is the Deputy Chief Medical Scientist, uh, Fellow of the West African uh, Postgraduate College of Medical Lab Science, as is Lord as well. So those are the gentlemen in my studio. Uh, no mean uh, personalities when it comes to the subject at hand, but you're welcome to join us and ask your questions. I've seen my senior and uh, friend, uh, uh, Prof. William Ampofu, who, when my senior says I can call him if I want. <laughs> Prof, I will see if my producer can uh, patch you into the program as well. Professor William Ampofu uh, used to be the head of uh, uh, virology at Noguchi. I do believe he's taking a well-earned retirement, but he's still very, very, very active, not as a virus, but as a, <laughs> as a virologist. Prof, we'll see if we can patch you in. Thanks for uh, tuning in. So that is understood, okay? So some of the, uh, should I say, misunderstandings about testing can be scientifically explained and verified. Exactly. That's the main point. Okay, right. So let me, can I, can I move? Are there other things that we need to touch on from last week? I want to look at reporting and how we manage these processes. Okay, last week we established that these tests and the samples required must be properly and professionally taken by persons who know how to take and handle the samples, right? Yeah. We also last week expressed some concern about uh, some of these uh, self-administered uh, kits and persons who handled it and may not take the proper samples or may not take it properly. Right, all of these which will introduce some variances. Seth, you are nodding. Is there anything I left out about uh, how samples are taken and tests are done? No, I, I think we mentioned um, very important parts. Um, however, we must know that laboratory test is done in a laboratory. Okay. And in any accredited laboratory, the rooms or the spaces where tests are done are controlled. Mm -hmm. Unlike when you want to do your own self test in your bathroom or in your hall or in your dining room, okay. you cannot control such a room. So when you enter labs, you see a lot of papers on the walls where you record temperatures, humidities, even the number of people who enter the room okay. is being recorded. Mm -hmm. Even laboratories, we even design walking way. Mm -hmm. You can't just walk anywhere from one point to the other. All right. You know, so self-testing has a lot of limitations. Okay. However, if you don't have But testing, those are duly registered and endorsed yes, when a lab instruments. Is, yeah, they are duly registered and endorsed right. for different purposes. For different purposes. You know, that one is good for people who do daily testing. So okay. when you go to UK and other places, people have to do daily testing as they go to work. They do the testing like every morning or every afternoon or every evening. All right. But it's not for a routine test that you are there. You think, ah, I have the symptoms. Let me test. Okay. Because you might not be able to take a very good sample. Okay. But when you do about 20 tests in a month, mm -hmm. at least one or two of them might pick the virus. So it's a good proxy. So it's a good proxy if you are going to do it often. Okay. Secondly, diagnostic tests are designed for populations. Okay. And most of these ones are designed for populations of Europe and, and other places. Mm -hmm. When it comes down here, it needs to be validated mm -hmm. by our own regulatory authority, which is the FDA, the FDA. or Standard Board, whatever. All right. So you don't just use things produced from one place to the other okay. and expect to have a similar uh, results. Okay. Secondly, when you are doing a laboratory test, 
on your own self-testing. You don't presume the results before you do your test. Okay. So people do the test. They say, I'm negative. They do the test to prove that they are negative. So no. Fiacqua. The but devil is test, a liar. You are just identifying So you something. bias your own expectation. You bias your own expectation. Okay. It can even blind your eye, just All right. like dreaming. Mm. All right. Okay. Right. So those are good things. And Seth, if I may introduce this uh, angle as well, um, you were a laboratory lead uh, with regard to our own airport testing, specifically Kotoka International Airport. Yes, please. Right. So what, you, you, you led the whole operation or how, what, were you, what role did you play? All right. So... Um, the whole technical laboratory operation was led by Prof. Sam Puffo. Mm -hmm. That began with the validation and the choice of a particular assay okay. or the choice of a particular test regime at okay. the airport. And I know a lot of um, meetings and deliberations went into deciding on a particular assay, which is the antigen assay. Okay. And it wasn't just an antigen assay. It's an immunofluorescent antigen assay. Right. So it's not a rapid diagnostic testing assay where we use strip or cassette. Right. However... It's a bit modified and a bit sensitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, not sensitive as in the sensitivity okay. that I've been explained. Right. So before even the machine is used, it has to go through a lot of validation processes okay. by Noguchi, FDA, for them to accredit. Okay. Then we were called in as scientists. To find one of the beauty about the laboratory testing at the airport is that you have amazing scientists from different backgrounds. So we have scientists from the Gucci, from Wabib, from Kolebu, from Ridge. We got some few from other institutions where we brought our knowledge and skills together because we didn't have any template to, to learn from. It, we, we just needed to do something new and unique to achieve the purpose of the country. You know, so about 240 scientists were put together to actually start the testing. And among these scientists, Every scientist is trained how to take a sample. Okay. And not just take a sample, to take a very good sample. If you train under such a person like for example, for, you will know how to take sample. Right. Because he will ride behind you to see how you practice. Okay. You know, we have a lot of um, research fellows from the Gucci who also assisted all right. in training and it was amazing. So we have all these scientists trained how to take good sample. Then we also train how to package samples. Mm -hmm. You see the beauty of antigen tests as compared to PCR tests, that you will test the sample within a very short time right. of sampling. Okay. So you don't you don't store the sample to probably expose the sample to other effects that could cause mm. um, uh, missed results. Okay. So you are taught how to package sample and transport sample to the lab. So we had all this, uh, let's say, uh, high-level human resource at our disposal on a regular basis and currently at the airport Yes. Uh, 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 undertaking these tests. We find um, the, the GAMS leadership has prayed on the government to assist a lot of labs in Ghana, at least the regional labs or maybe the district labs. To find the lab has the human resource capacity knowledge-wise okay. to establish every kind of lab we, have, we want to have in this country. Okay. And COVID would have been a very good advantage to do so. They've done, they've done some, okay. they've done some in, in other regional houses, but I think that we have the human resource. We right. have the capacity. We were shocked that we could do what we did within that short time okay. in Ghana. All right. So we built the capacity, and you're hearing from uh, Seth Ajiman, who uh, played a laboratory lead uh, with regard to what we're doing at the airport. If you have any questions, concerns, 055 1111 uh, Shortly, I will activate the phone lines about... 32 minutes past the hour of two on Joy 99.7 FM. The program is Ultimate Health, your ultimate guide to healthy living with me, Norte by Nature. And I'm in uh, August company, in August, actually the 15th of August. Uh, they are biomedical scientists and they play a huge role. Indeed, one of the questions I want to ask, so the numbers I read out, which are on the Ghana Health Service platform, on a daily basis, right? When we say these are positive cases, these are recovered cases, these are de determined by various tests or by one, one uh, final conclusive PCR. Uh, what I'm asking is, so when I see the numbers, cumulative and all that, uh, it, it could have been on the basis of different tests, or? Yes. I think um, the Ghana Health Service has a software called SOMAS. All right. SOMAS is being used by all laboratory testing COVID centers. To right. find without you on SOMAS, you cannot even be accredited to test COVID. Right. Now, for now, COVID testing in Ghana is either PCR or antigen. Okay. So in the SOMAS platform, you either choose whether you did an antigen test or a PCR test. 
However, all antigen test positives must be confirmed by PCR okay. within three days. All right. So within three days. Within three days. Okay. So most of, most of the time, when you test antigen positive, the lab or the clinic that and for for listeners, you, please, three days is seventy two hours. Okay. 72 don't hours, don't yes. get it twisted. Okay. So, yes. And it depends. So there are two categories. We mm -hmm. have what we call high prob high probability risk individuals and low probability risk individuals. If you get to the hospital and they see that you have almost all the signs and symptoms of COVID and they do antigen test and you are positive, they will highly likely start managing you as a COVID patient. Okay. But if you are asymptomatic, there's nothing wrong with you and you test antigen, they will have to confirm with PCR right. within 24 to 40, uh, 72 okay. hours before... You can be so that's what we call syndromic management. Something you like have that. the features. We go straight ahead. We ahead we, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You know. So if you look at the data on the Ghana Service platform, they take this data from all the labs to okay. find the data. Are, the data is taken live. So every lab you register the patient in SOMAS. Then when the result is ready, you upload it in SOMAS. And at the end of every day, the rule is that in 24 within 24 hours, you are right. supposed to send a summary of all your test results. Also to the data officer of, of Ghana Health Service. Okay, slow down a bit, slow down a sec, right? <laughs> so every accredited registered lab that is conducting COVID-19 testing in Ghana mm -hmm. must be on this platform. Yes. And then as you commence the uh, program of testing, mm -hmm. you are registering every individual person. Therefore, every individual test yes. is registered and uploaded onto this platform. Onto the platform. Okay. At the end of your day's operation or any segment of operation, mm -hmm. you must send and upload summary. a summary of your... All your test, positive, negative, total... Onto that platform. Onto that platform. Okay. And also in an email to the data officer of Ghana Health Service. Okay. So they are provided a particular email. In case maybe your software or network was down, right. you could send a summary sheet to okay. them. Right, and this SOMAS is also divided into segments. So when two pa passengers or two patients come to a lab, all right, and one lives in Kanishi, the other lives in Kaswa, okay, it is entered according to the district where the person lives at. Right. So as soon as it is entered and I have results, right, the district could see that I have one positive case in my district. Great. From the SOMAS. Great. So that is why we should be able to, and we we are able to. Uh, designate cases to district management teams yeah. to follow up on the cases. Yes, I right. think that is what is done. So the district management team should also be able to access SOMAX. Yes, they have. They have the access. They have. So as soon as you declare from whichever test facility that this person is positive, right, mm -hmm. the address they gave you mm -hmm. or the details they gave you will match them to a district. Great. And that facilitates the follow-up. The follow-up. Great, great, great stuff. 36 minutes past the hour of uh, two. I thought we were just going to be repeating, but you can see we're getting more detailed and uh, my VAR is working. Uh, <laughs> my producer has tried contacting Prof Ampofo, who has not picked his call yet. We'll keep trying. He's on now? Okay, he's trying now, right? So um, uh, we'll try and bring him into the picture. So this is what I've got so far. Let me just kindly read out a couple of your... Uh, WhatsApp messages. Hello. Okay, is that Prof? Okay, where, where's Prof? On phone. All oh, right, sorry. Too many buttons. <laughs> Senior, good afternoon, Prof. Yeah, yeah good afternoon. Right. Very interesting, interesting discussion. And thank you for um, the effort to educate the public on testing. It's not easy to explain the scientific terms, uh, false positive, false negative. So I thank my colleague, the biomedical scientist, for the effort to explain. There was one point comparing antigen test to antibody test. And I think it was stated that antigen tests are better than antibody tests. So I wanted to correct that. Um, statement. I, don't, I don't think that, that came up. But you, you go, go ahead, Prof. Yes, um, so I think maybe probably he was saying antigen versus PCR or antigen versus antibody or we, we use them for specific, you know, purposes or objectives. That's right. Antibody to see the immune response to the particular pathogen. Antigen to see that the person is actually Sweet. or the pathogen is actively replicating. And then PCR to establish that, yes, that particular genetic material from that 
pathogen is present in the individual to confirm the infection um, occurred recently or previously. So I, I think it's important to have those distinctions. And okay. uh, also the point made about sample collection being very important. And so people, when they say they are testing, sometimes they refer to the sample being collected and sent to a lab for the actual process of the diagnosis. So we need to separate the sample collection um, from the uh, testing process. Right. Okay. Uh, and I think uh, I, I'm very happy with uh, the distinctions and the clarifications that uh, my colleagues are uh, doing. Right. Okay. So we have passed the test, right? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. I hope you are enjoying your retirement and not doing what most Africans do. Actually, you know, I coordinate a national network, so I'm very active. I'm on post-retirement contract. I'm enjoying continuing making a significant contribution. And this all goes to the other work on finding uh, capacity to make vaccines in Ghana. So, you know, requires a concerted national effort. So we move on. Right. Okay. And I can't imagine you being inactive in any sense of the word. So thanks for sharing your Sunday with us and uh, enriching uh, the program and uh, those clarifications as well. So you just heard speaking uh, Professor William Ampofo, formerly the head of uh, virology at Noguchi, uh, Noguchi uh, um, uh, Medical Research Labs. Uh, and he made some clarifications. Anything you want to say in, in response to that? I think he... he, he he uh, clarified yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. I just want to say that when Prof says his colleagues, uh, that might not actually be the right thing. We are all his students, so... <laughs> no, no, that, that's how it's done. <laughs> so when he says that we are his colleagues... When, when you've taken part in growing people, building capacity, they are all, right? So that, that's the important thing, yeah. okay? Yeah. Right? We salute him yeah, most... He, yes? Yeah, thank you, so, uh I think... Uh, what I just wanted to add, uh, and it comes to Prof, but also... Oh, okay, I mean, okay, this is Dennis, uh, right. And then joining up the uh, discussion, and I think, as he had said, uh, we actually are blind that PCR, antigen, antibody, they all have their space yeah. as the protocols determine when you can use it and for what purpose. That's right. So, good Prof has also come to shed more light on it. Okay. But on the latter part, as said, as indicated... What I wanted to add is that, uh, in fact, this is a kind of a concerted effort. The mm -hmm. testing and everything, whether we should believe the numbers and all that, is kind of coordinated. Every day in my lab, as I am running out of reagents, as I am running out of logistics, I send a request, the facility will send a request straight to Prof. He kind of approved, because he said he is kind of coordinating the testing in Ghana. Once it's approved, Arrangement is made for you to get a reagent and the needed items in your okay. laboratory. Where okay. you are located. All right. So, based on that, if samples are collected from the various districts, it will come through the regional directory. These are marked either by barcode, numbers are given. That will tell you where the sample is coming from, who the sample belongs to. And once the lab finishes working on it, as said, said the summer or by email communication, you feed back to the regional health directory system. Okay. Who through the disease surveillance officers will get to the district and then to the facilities where the samples are come from. So at every point in time, you are keeping track of where samples are coming from, who they belong to, and every lab tries as much as possible not to exceed 48 hours upon receipt of samples to produce results. Okay. And you always feed back every day. Every day I send email communication of our results and everything to Dr. Asir Bepin and copy his data pieces. Okay. So he is always keeping track every day from each lab. So okay. that's why I tell people that the numbers are not just cooked out there. People are working and all and all are PCR, except the travelers that are trying to get the antigen and the PCR. But most of the ones coming from our lab, being it the gen aspect, which is the one for TB, now we have used to do most of the PCR tests. Right. And the regular traditional PCR testing. Okay. Most of our public are PCR, and we communicate on real time to help in the Great stuff. Not the numbers. They have not been cooked. Okay. They are coming from right. Okay.
Right. Nobody said the numbers are cooked, but we do have concerns about the delay and the time lag. When we are calculating seven-day averages and other things, these are specific uh, statistics that we are concerned about. So, um, like I said, always on Ultimate Health, uh, knowledge over noise. And that's what we're doing. If you want to make noise, another dial, another program, and definitely another host. It won't happen. Right. This one says, good afternoon, Ni. I receive it. Please, is contact tracing going on? And how do the base schools get contact tracing done for them since they close and go home after school this is from papasi or papasi right uh good afternoon Norte. those of us abroad with a bit of knowledge about antigen tests are still struggling to understand why ghana still charges 150 dollars per test all right that is not a lab matter but i'll ask my my guests as well thanks for sharing that from outside good afternoon this one says samson it's probably for samson's program on the other side uh, good afternoon, Norte. Greetings to my senior colleagues in the studio. I wish to something something about Dr. Michael McCarthy of Sinel Specialist Hospital. I wish him a happy birthday from MLS Gary Thomas of Sinel Laboratory. Oh, Michael, you didn't tell me. Happy birthday to uh, a good friend of Ultimate Health, Dr. Michael McCarthy of Sinel Specialist Hospital in Tema. Enjoy the day legally right back in the studio uh let me see were there any questions on my whatsapp i just uh uh nope i think i've read all of them okay right so coming back into the studio this uh somax and this software is to facilitate the process right some time back we were overwhelmed there were not that many testing centers and sites now we have several testing centers and sites and you confirm to me they are all Hooked onto this system. I've read out today. I went on the site today and the figures are as at the 10th of August. Five days lag, right? Um, how do we explain this given the wonderful apparatus and the senior personnel or in fact the, the high level of human resource we have uh, harnessed and mobilized for this job? How do we explain five days? Because I'm not a data officer at the Ghana Health Service. Okay. But I know... What yeah. you are saying, let me, let me just pr uh, present my case again. Okay. You do this on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. You cannot work and you should not work on a case without logging it into the database. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, this allows us to keep a track of our accumulated cases and so on, where yes. they are dispersed or how they are, you know, in the whole country. Yes. That's why we are able to get these regional breakdowns. Yes. All this is live. Yes. Despite any uh, doom saw or dark and lovely or yes. whatever we call it. <laughs> All right, good. So yes. why this lag? If you have fed it into the system and on a daily basis, you give, uh, should I say, a duly, properly endorsed daily summary, uh, which I believe will be endorsed by a senior uh, scientist. Yes. So, um, so last week there was... There yeah, was Lord, we'll come to you in a second. Yeah, last week there was a meeting where I could hear from the voice of Dr. C.A.D. Beckwin, um, very angry oh, as to why they are not able to get all the data, I mean 100% of the data. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are challenges with a bit of compliance. There are some labs which, who are very good at, in, in complying, I mean, I mean uh, within, within 24 hours. I know they still don't get all the data in a day to be able to make informed decision. Let's not forget that before a data is published, it needs to be um, analyzed. Verified. Analyzed. You know, so and I know the Ghana Health Service also has a team yes. of, of, of statistical, um, of, of statisticians who right. have to analyze this data and publish them. My only hope is that those who test positive, right, usually the labs or the clinics or whoever is responsible gives them a call. Right. So, I'm not so worried about whether the data published on their website is five days old mm. or, or two days old. But my biggest worry is that those who tested positive five days old, have they been contacted five days ago? Right. Yeah. Do they even know that they are positive five days ago? Right. This will be very, very important to our fight. Okay. But for the data being published late, I think they can do better. And I'm sure we are, we are getting there. We are getting there. You see, um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'll go to Lord and come back. But one of my concerns, right, somebody might think I'm splitting hairs. But the seriousness is that if you have a graph, and we are all scientists, though I'm in social science, right? If you have a graph, right, one is numbers and the other is time, right? 
and you delay in releasing this information, that graph has yeah. been impacted by that inordinate delay. Yeah. Nobody can argue about that. Yeah. If I'm giving you daily figures and I say uh, our graph dipped or slowed down in this period of the week or the year, and that dip or slowness or slowing down or retardation or regression of the graph is due to a delay in processing data, then that I believe that is why or one of the reasons we have this seven-day average and these proxies mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so on. But uh, it is of concern, and I'm hoping listeners will understand why these <coughs> things are important. Yeah. So if your graph has slowed down or your climb has slowed down and it is a genuine slowdown, that is okay. Yeah. But if it's being impacted by the fact that we are processing data later, and I do believe last year there was a strong... Uh, should I say, advise that we had cleared backups, uh, backlogs, and now we will be getting daily figures, right? I'm very detailed in those things, so I can go back for those voices, <laughs> right? So what is the, you know, for people to yeah. understand? That is where the challenge is, but I'm glad you've explained. Okay. Lord, you wanted to come in. Um, I think that was Dennis. That was Dennis. Dennis, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at Dennis and saying, Lord. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that's good. He's, he's a close pal. So. Uh, you're yeah. all viruses anyway. <laughs> so, so, uh, me, I think uh, I just want to capture a bit of the perspective because I, I'm working with uh, the team directly. And in fact, I'm also part of the National Case Management Team. Great. So I want to give a bit of perspective to it. All things being equal, the first time that probably we can even report of results probably might be in a space of 48 hours. You get it. So now Can you say that say, please say that again for the benefit of my listeners. And the uh, listeners, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to activate the phone lines 0302216541. Sorry I've held it back. It's uncharacteristic of me, but there's a lot of uh, variables in the studio. Right. So yeah, see, say that so again. If I have if I have a sample, I'm saying that all labs are to try as much as possible not to exceed 48 hours to give results for samples they receive. Okay. There are labs that you are likely to get giving results within 24 hours. That depends on load, how many samples they have received in a day. Okay. Because the processes are such a way that once you receive a sample, you have to go through the lysing and extraction. That is, you need to go through a process to get the nucleic acid material. Okay. That is what we are going to initiate the polymerase chain reaction. Right. And some of the setup will take you about one hour, 30 minutes to even two hours, depending on the method that you are using. Yes. They are all PCR. So... But nicely. Dennis, given that, and uh, I'm going to announce the okay. phone lines again. I bet my phone line should be active. Eh? 0302216541. Given that, once you have completed the process, no matter how long it took, you log it into a system. Oh? Yes. So, so the, that's what I'm saying. That before the sample comes to my lab, it's logged into the SOMAS. The mm -hmm. lab, once you are done analyzing, you input the results. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. That the sample that has come which is not supposed to exceed 48 hours, in the best and all things being equal, I will produce results in 48 hours. That is two days. So it means that it might be difficult for you to be talking about real-time data throughout Ghana. So okay. that is why, and these same results will come, you have to validate. You have to make sure that really you've identified the people and really the cases that okay. are out there. All right. So it goes through a level of validation, and I think that even at best, we may be talking about 48 hours. But within six hours, within 24 hours, it might be difficult to be dealing with figures. Even okay. the WHO dashboard is not real time as people are testing. Okay. Unless you are dealing with antigen tests, which is like 20, 30 minutes. Okay. My legal friends will say very well. Very well. Right. Uh, I learned a lot of things when the, the Supreme Court case was going on. Yes, Lord, you wanted to come in. Yes, I just wanted to say that even the data that is presented, it's not only about the lab, uh, those who are positive. It's not only just the lab component. Right. There's the number of recoveries, there are the yes, number of yes, people yes. who have died mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. So all of these data would have to come in. They would have to be cleaned. When is the data has to be cleaned, they have to be verified. Right. And make sure that the data you are sending out it's actually a true reflection of what is really there. Does the SOMAX platform also host deaths, recoveries, and all that? Well, from, from where we sit, yes. 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 Supposed to, uh, okay. From where we sit, it's usually uh, our lab data and all of that. But okay. 
Yes, it's okay. supposed to, to host all Good, of good, good. And although these are coming in uh, uh, every time in, in terms of real time, okay, they, there's going to be a lag, mainly because of the fact that uh, the labs are reporting sometimes. Like some people will report 24 hours, some will report 48 hours, okay. and all of that. And then the people working Understood. on the data will have to clean it, verify certain things before they can bring it out. So Understood. A, a bit of delay is important. So what, essentially, uh, is, when is, we're told is, some time is, back, and I know somebody will come back at me and say we we're not told, that we had cleared backlogs and we'll be getting data daily uh, figures that that from what you guys are saying as the scientists is unrealistic or at least not practicable yeah unless everybody oh, oh. is compliant so that all the tests are being done within 24 okay. hours and then they are That's being fine. reported and everything understood as at now it is it is a bit uh, unrealistic okay, to expect great. results I, I can i can deal with that but okay. i just want to add something and, yeah. and i think uh, uh, mr Jiman talked about it the fact is that even if the data is not released mm -hmm. within the 24 hours the people who test positive the follow-up yes, goes follow -up on. And, and the contact or should go on. Should go on. Because okay. that is most important. If you don't get back to them, mm -hmm. then they'll go about the activities and everything, and then the spread continues. Right. I think that is most more important than, and, than reporting right. the data. Okay, right, hours. than the dashboard. And also more important is the fact that if you have tested and you are waiting for your results, yeah. yes. sit, yeah. stay, follow the protocols, yeah. right? Don't say, well, it hasn't come yet, so... Mm -hmm. Right? Or move around. Uh, I think that's essentially the, the message we are getting Very from you. Important. That there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of lag which can be genuine and valid. But the clinical picture doesn't change. Yes. You are under investigation for a very serious uh, condition or disease or virus. And therefore, you don't move around. Eh? So what should I do if I've been tested and I haven't gotten my results? Um, I should inform those close to me and I should follow the protocols. Yes. And yes. they should help me follow it. Yes. Oh? Yes. 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 Right. You see, one thing, one thing that uh, a lot of people practice is that we have become uh, um, risky. Uh, we have we are, we are started uh, becoming very risky in, in our behavior, even when we are tested. A lot of people, either they've had the vaccine or because at the very beginning, right. uh, uh, COVID didn't affect the country as much as we all thought it was going mm -hmm. to be. People test, even people test positive, they put on their mask and then they go about... Uh, roaming in town, okay. Even though they've, they've, they've even they've though they are positive, yes. Yeah. Even though they, they 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 tested positive, so right. Some of these things, I think that we need the general public to also uh, be uh, be be very circumspect. Okay. If you are even if you've tested and the result is not in, mm -hmm. stay at home. Let okay. your your loved ones or even your colleagues who might who may come visit you or anything. Right. Let them know that I have tested for COVID. I don't have the results yet, so I'm going to to isolate myself. For a while until I get okay. my results. If I'm negative, then fine. Right. Positive, if you have a relative who's being stubborn eh, or doesn't want to sit, eh, doesn't want to follow these things, please, I've said today my refrain is be safe or be a statistic. Yes. Right? Yes. Be safe or be a statistic. Good afternoon, Norte. It's some, it's the same health workers, professionals who cast doubts on these figures. No, it's some of the same health workers who cast doubt on these figures. This is from Abna. All right, Abna, I've shared yours. Uh, good afternoon, Norte and studio panelists. I tested positive for COVID-19 on 7th August, so I'm in my 10th day of isolation. My husband tested negative, my first daughter of 8 years tested positive, and my last daughter of 5 years is negative. Do I still need to isolate for 14 days? I showed symptoms of difficulty in breathing and severe cough. My daughter was asymptomatic and is receiving treatment, but isolation for her is difficult. Since the five-year-old is usually around here playing, what do I do? Safwa shares that. Let me quickly read a few more. Uh, good afternoon, Norte. Please ask, how many days interval after testing? Negative. Does one need to test again to be sure he or she is not, uh, does not have the COVID? This is Adman Joseph in Community 9. Hi, Norte. I teach in a basic school. Uh, and hey, it's like COVID is a big hoax or joke. The ingredients, the indigents doubt it. Likewise, the students. We, the teachers, are fed up of enforcing the protocols because they know that the teachers won't come, won't cane or turn them out in class. We teachers are now powerless before our students. In fact, now mask free for all. Talk COVID and you are the biggest joker of the century. I'm a teacher. Saddam from Bato. Wow. Uh, let me see if I can quickly finish this. As we are running out of time. Good afternoon. Please, I would like to find out if an antigen could be detected in a PCR, if, in a PCR test if it is done 14 days after symptoms develop. This is from Kobe in London. 
antigens no. in a PCR test done two weeks later. And then good afternoon, Ni. Uh, what I know is some of the lab centers give results based on the amount paid. If you pay big money, you get your results in six hours. Why should it be so? This is Richard in Ashie, Oshie or Ashie, right? Uh, okay, oh, I'm still not done. Ni, some employers, employees are being harassed after taking the test and awaiting results. Some employers want them to work at all costs. Papa, wow. Uh, these are real issues, and uh, we have two minutes left, right? Employers are pushing you. You're following what you heard on Ultimate Health. You've tested. You should stay uh, safe and stay at home. They want you back at work. Quick responses to some of these things, uh, if we can do it in a, a minute and a half. Yes, I, I just have two things. Uh, when it comes to the employers uh, uh, enforcing or asking uh, workers to come to work, I think that when you do the test, you should expect the results within a certain time. And so we should be able to explain to employers that if I stay at home, I am actually uh, helping my other colleagues. I'm protecting the workplace. Yes, because if I come to work and I am positive, that means that all my workers are going to stay okay, at home. Good point. And at the end of the day, uh, it's going to affect the work. So okay. you and, and once you, you've tested, you can still do some work at home. All right. So uh, some employees will also say, I've tested for COVID, so no work at all. all Maybe right. you can take some of the work home. So let's be responsible. Yes, that, that is also Okay. Important. Why so, are you giving tests out uh, on the basis of money? Okay, so so th this is the thing. We have a lot of cases, mm -hmm. and so most labs would, would batch uh, uh, tests and then run them. Mm -hmm. But then um, there are certain tests you can run, uh, I mean, within within a short, let's say six hours, right? Especially if you've paid a lot of money. Yeah, just, <laughs> just a minute. So uh, instead of waiting for for um, a lot of other samples to come and okay. for other people to come so that you run all the samples together, that saves uh, time, that saves uh, cost and all of that. So if somebody is going to pay okay. a higher amount, you can run only that person's uh, okay. uh, sample. All so right. that, that is some of the, the uh, uh, reasons why people uh, sometimes get their results uh, okay. if they pay higher. Unfortunately, yeah. we run out of time. Uh, Dennis? I, I, said, I said that, I guess that is with a private setting. Private setting. Private setting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. great, private. great. Uh, Gentlemen, you've been awesome. Thanks for coming back for a second test. I think uh, I'll declare your status on Ultimate Health <laughs> later. Thanks very much, Dr. Lord Basing, uh, Seth Ajiman, and Dr. Dennis edu uh, all biomedical uh, uh, scientists, and we've looked at the uh, COVID-19 testing. I hope you've gotten some understanding and clarity, but more importantly, I say, be safe. Don't be a statistic. Stick and stay on Joy 99.7 FM. Sunday Rhythms is up next with B-Lay. And many thanks to my producer, Abe Kusankofi, and of course you, my discerning listeners. I'm out. My name is Note by nature. Bye-bye.